Hey guys, Davison here. I've decided whenever I feel like it, I'm gonna vlog on this channel, which I mean, I shouldn't have to explain that because I've already told you guys a million times this is my vlogging channel that I upload whatever I want onto it. But like, I felt like discussing my divorce. Now, I was never actually married, but I was with the same guy for 13 years, or no, maybe more, no, actually, for almost 14. Anyhow, it was a really tough decision to leave that relationship. Um, we went back and forth for years. Now, I don't know what I wanna get into in terms of like particulars of like, at what point did I leave? Did I leave for different reasons at different times? Did he try to leave me? Yes, yeah, so all of the above is, is true. But I think ultimately what was preventing me from leaving is what I want to address today. And it's a couple things. So first off, it was the fear of not being able to take care of myself. I am a person that's sometimes anxious and I fear that something bad could happen to me. I could get hurt. My parents were always like really like freaked out about like, you have to be careful. You have to be responsible. Don't get too excited or something bad will happen, especially my dad. And um, so I kind of grew up as a person who's like hyper vigilant, like, oh, oh my God, okay, oh, what could hurt me? What could, which is great because like it's very self protective, but it's bad because then things that really are of low risk, you turn into like a big deal when it's just the stakes are not that high and it is not that likely that something, you know, horrible is going to occur. So I think I just thought, given my anxiety and given my relationship with this this man, um, that I would always seek reassurance from him, like, oh my God, across the street funny, uh, this is what happened, do you think that I was stupid? And he'd write back and be like, no, you're fine. And then I'd feel better instead of just reassuring myself, right? Or that it's scary to be a woman, you know, alone in an apartment, you know, although I'm not alone because my son is here, but like, and having to take care of anything that could possibly happen, something could break, so the fire could break, loose, uh, I, I don't know, someone could break in and it's just me, well, me and my son, my giant son, who's like almost 6'4", but um, can't, I can't deal with that, I need a man, I need a, I need a man to protect me, I, I need a man to be there, I need a man, like, what if I collapse and then no one comes home and then it's just me and a lump on the floor, I gotta have a man, but I didn't realize that, no, you, 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 you that, that shit could happen any time of the day, and, you know, people go to work, people go on business trips, and I needed to man the fuck up and get over fear, so first was basically fear for my physical safety and emotional issues about, you know, I can't cope with this shit on my own, which is just preposterous and I, I believe I'm starting to get a rain on it I've had a few moments where I've been scared but I've reassured myself and I think this is gonna be like an opportunity for immense personal growth okay secondly attachment when you were with someone your entire adult life I started going out with them when I was like 24 or 25 holy 24 holy shit eh? 24 I was a baby um, you, they become part of the story of your life. They know you in a way that nobody else knows you. And my family has not always been like the most reliable for me. They can be very supportive if I ever need to hit them up, you know, financially or whatever. They're they're there for me. Um, but like, they raised me to be very independent, very fierce, a fighter, a questioner. But they don't get close necessarily as a result. They kind of hold you at an arm's length a bit and are not like are 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 too open in some ways but then not open enough in other ways so because i had this kind of like a tenuous slightly tumultuous because they're very passionate people very opinionated people relationship with my family with him even though towards the end the last you know five years when he developed a drinking problem um he was my rock. He he would side with me. He would be like, they're being mean to you because they were mean to me sometimes. I maybe overreacted to some of their stuff, but no, ultimately they were not very nice. So to, to know that I would be leaving that rock, that caring person that's like, no, you're not the one that's the problem. They frequently are the problem. They're not supportive enough. I'm there for you. I will be with you, fight for you, never give up on you, get you at two in the morning, let you do what you want and still love you. Like that is very hard to leave. So, but yeah, I, I didn't feel like I was with the right person. 
I didn't, I felt like I was with mostly the right person, but I was never, I was, it just never felt right. And, and I never wanted to get married to him. I never wanted to have his baby. I kept avoiding it, avoiding it. I loved him, but I just, I was like, no, this is not my soulmate. He's not my soulmate. And I, I owe it to myself to be with that person. But at, at the same time, I wasn't committing to it. Like I wasn't committing to trusting that I, the answer was no, and that he deserved to find someone that he could match with that wanted to give him the things that I could in a more traditional life, you know, with a house and a baby. Not to say that I don't want those things, but not high on my list of priorities and, and not on my list of priorities with him specifically. So, um, so there was the attachment. And then too, I think too, the third thing is that I came from a tumultuous background. So naturally I sometimes have sought dynamics subconsciously, perhaps, I don't know, that can be very passionate. So I don't know, but I don't think that's entirely true because I want it out. Um, but yet I, you know, conflict sometimes gives you a reason to, to stay. I don't know. It's very, it's very weird. Um, and finally, I think the reason that I didn't leave is because of guilt. I felt guilty for wanting something different than what he was because he has so many amazing qualities. You know, he's very committed loyal, smart, kind, gentle, but you know, provided he's not, you know, he's not drinking and being a, a jerk or, you know, self-destructive. Um, he's very much self-destructive as opposed to destructive to other people. Though when you drink, ultimately you are. And there were moments where he was, you know, definitively destructive towards us. And, um, and the last instance where there was a cop car that showed up because of the way that he was screaming and yelling, um, that, you know, that was very destructive and throwing my phone, you know, shit like that. That's just, it's not cool. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I, I just, I felt guilty for wanting something. I know what I want. I, I know the type of man I want. I know what I love. I know the type of artist I've been looking for my whole life. Like you don't understand, but it's fine. Like I'm fine. I'm fine on my own. It's just that like, I was, I've been looking for it over and over again and I've tried over and over again with different, different people, you know, actually simul, sort of simultaneously while well being with him in terms of like getting to know people, not actually, you know, physically being with them, but getting to know them and, you know, had my heart broken you know, a bunch of times, which is fair. And, and I'm glad it didn't work out with any of those guys because we weren't each other's soulmates. And so that's cool. I'm cool with that. But, um, yeah, I know what I want. And I want someone who works with me. They don't have to work with me every day. I would love, I love to have my space, but that someone meets me here and then we go like this and we meet and we have this vision and we bring other you know, things into each other's lives that are interesting and innovative. And, you know, we're like Di Antwerp, that couple, you know, they, they make such fucking freaky ass shit together. And they're so, they're so right. Like that is what I want for myself. And God damn it, I will be alone for the next X amount of years until that happens. I want, I'm not, I'm not settling this time. I'm not doing it. I'm not, I'm not, not that he, not that he was a, settling in a, in a horrible way. Like I don't want to, I don't want to pin negative things on him that aren't true because he helped me raise my, raise my son. And I think that also kept us together too, because it is very hard to be a single mother. Um, and he made my son a very kind, responsible young man because he himself is a kind, responsible man. Um, but that said, you know, I just, it wasn't, he wasn't the one. And so it couldn't, that combined with the drinking, combined with not wanting his baby, combined with, you know, me being interested in other people and specifically being interested in another person. I just, and then the police car, I was like, that's it, this is over. Like I've done, I, if, what I'm gonna always like look for another man while I'm with him. That's not very fair to him. That's not fair at all. That's terrible. That makes me a shitty fucking, I'm trapping him when, I don't want to use the word trap because I've had that word used towards me recently and I thought that it was like unfair because I don't trap anyone. People have to be with me voluntarily or they're free to leave. Like, But like in the sense that he wanted me very badly because of the type of person he is, but I wasn't allowing him to get what he needed, which is a lovely woman who's more traditional, who will have his baby, get married, have a house, have a white picket fence, and, and have this, this beautiful family, this child, that he's baby, that he's always, always, always wanted, that is his, that is his blood. And I, I was not going to give it to him. 
So I let him go, and I think that is the most fucking noble thing I can do. And because of letting him go, I think he's going to face his fucking drinking problem. And um, I, I just I want the I want the best for him, and I want the best for myself. And I, you know, I wasn't like the type of person that was going to just give up. You know, it's like you got to fight for your relationship, to fight for your love. You, you know, people give up too easily. There's all these like notions of that. But like him and I passed that point where it's like, no, like you know what you want Davison it made Davison you know the man that you love and it ain't him cut the fucking bullshit and I did so because I let go of fear I decided that my rock can be myself I decided that my passion and my love needs to be reignited and I haven't met my soulmate that's why and he has a drinking problem I left so there you go. My name is Davison. I vlog here when I feel like it. This is the most personal I think I have ever gotten on this channel, but I, it's very cathartic for me. This is therapy for me. So whenever I feel like talking, when I'm alone at night, like I think I'm going to fire up this webcam and just be like, dudes, like this is, this is me. Like this is what I went through. And maybe other women that are going or men that are going through the same thing and feel guilty, like they shouldn't leave the person that they're with. Give yourself permission. Trust your gut life is better it's hard at first and things change and you're more responsible for all aspects but life is better i can say so far on the other side and you're better off alone than unhappy with somebody else and unhappy like i know people like oh well, happy is such a selfish thing to want no no it's sometimes it's gonna be hard but like you know when unhappy you know when that's that it's wrong and don't live in the wrong live in the truth